Folklore is traditional beliefs, customs, and stories of community passed on to the generations by the word of mouth. Modernization has, however, caused many young people to lose track of their folklore. History and the way of life, which are urgently needed to revisit these unique ways to explain culture and way of life has become very important. In Ghana, Mrs. Benis Andekuma is the National Folklore Board Director. The National Folklore Board is an agency under the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture of Ghana. It is tasked with the responsibility of protecting expressions of folklore in Ghana. Mrs. Dekuma was once acting executive director of the W.E.B. Dubois Memorial Center for Pan-African Culture in Ghana. The governing body of the National Folklore Board was inaugurated in Ghana's capital city of Accra on Monday, February 14, 2022. And today we have its head, Mrs. Dekuma, joining us on hashtag the African Dream for a conversation as she attempts to answer some of your questions while educating us on the value of her work. Welcome to the African Dream. Thank you. Since cultural and tradition play a vital role in a country, cultural pride doesn't exist in a vacuum. And poverty is a critical factor in people shunning their heritage. How do you intend to instill the love of culture and allow young Ghanaians to own their cultural identity and pride? Thank you, uh, our listeners. Uh, culture is part of life of a people, a group of people. And as you rightly said, poverty has been an issue that the country or the culture is battling with and how the youth will appreciate in the where poverty has been an issue or a challenge. I have to say that because we actually do not use what we have. If a country wants to be out of poverty, we have to use what we have. When you produce food like our own papransa, food like yakayake, wache, things that we produce and we eat them, we grow them and we eat them and we reduce importation, it can reduce poverty. And so the youth has to understand that what we produce, we have to use it. When we do that, we can reduce poverty. Like our testers, most of them do not like to use some of the testers that are produced in Ghanaian uh, markets. And so they import clothes from outside. And when you do that, the dollar, the rate to dollar to CD is high. So eventually the rate of poverty will increase. So the more you love your culture, the more you use what you have, the more that is the rate at which you reduce poverty. And so it is the, the step the National Folklore Board is taking to educate the youth to know that the more we use what we have, and that is the way we can reduce poverty. So the love of who we are, appreciating our value system, and then also consuming what we produce. And that is the way we can go to reduce poverty. And so the power is in the hands of the youth to choose between appreciating what we have as people instead of using things from outside um, the Ghana. And that is the way we can go by reducing poverty. Thank you. It's interesting from your response, 
uh, it's obvious that culture and uh, tradition um, go a long way in becoming currency. And as we appreciate value and use them, the more we sort of like um, uh, increase their value and um, in a way help fight poverty. You mentioned the youth. Um, the youth are also looking up to their predecessors and um, ways in which they are doing things and can um, use these ways to help improve on how dynamic things have become in this modern era. Which leads me um, to the next question. What is the board doing to encourage the use of traditional clothing, language, music, food, which you touched heavily on? Um, in schools and ultimately the potential um, of teaching uh, subjects like math or science or technology or, you know, um, technical based subjects uh, in some of the local Ghanaian languages. We know we have a lot of languages in Ghana, but at least some of them are very common. Have we considered teaching in these languages? Yeah, the um, Brass, you rightly uh, said, the board realizing that for somebody to appreciate uh, our traditions, our value system, our folklore, it starts when the very person is very young. And so initial step we have taken as a board is to establish uh, folklore clubs in schools. Some selected schools, as I mean, according to our financial resources, we roll up from school to school so that virtually we cover most schools in Accra and also go to the regions. And so we educate them from the ages of five uh, up to 14. Those are the where we started from before we run other program for the youth. We also collaborating with uh, Ghana Education Service, that's the cultural unit uh, to start festival, which will start next year and further, uh, they now they are now coming to have um, creative arts into the syllabus, like beginning uh, from class five to uh, class six. So they are starting this um, in the syllabus. Ghana Education Service is trying to incorporate uh, the teaching of creative arts and other um, uh, culture subjects. Apart from that, uh, we also. Um, discussing with the Ghana Education Service how fast some of these languages, for instance, when the person is at the lower level, teaching them in English, sometimes it's a bit difficult for them to understand and appreciate what they are learning. And so we are working closely with them. And for instance, if not at the university level, because some subjects, uh, those who are at the university level, some are doing chi, some are doing um, uh, gang, some are doing every and all that. That one is a subject area, but we are advising that it is better that when the person is like KG, uh, Nesri, they should teach them in their local language so that they will understand what actually is being taught. So we are working closely with Ghana Education Service. It's not so easy. We just started the relationship not quite long. I had a meeting with the um, uh, Ghana Education Service uh, culture a unit rep in my office. And so we are sitting, we want to uh, explore the, the avenues that are available that the board can use to um, encourage that these subjects are incorporated into uh, Ghana education syllabus to teach the students. And so these are the steps we just started. So we are hoping that by next year, we can come up with this, um, actually what we have achieved. It's, um, it's very encouraging to hear you say that um, there are works in the, in the making to um, explore the possibility of teaching some of these um, basic subjects in local Ghanaian languages. I mean, uh, imagine how exciting it will be for us to wake up one day in the future to say, hey, we're now teaching math in Chi or math in Ever or math in the Dangbe language or maybe science in, you know, uh, Sisala or something. <laughs> it's, it's, it's exciting to hear. And um, we're looking forward to the possibility because we feel like the best way to instill the love of the culture and also open the minds of the practitioners of the culture is to teach them in the languages that they understand. 
that way exactly. they can easily embrace what it is that they've been taught. So kudos to you and your team. And we're looking forward to seeing these amazing things come to reality. Let me ask you, um, you mentioned uh, this uh, issue that touches on education and teaching in the local languages. But what are some of the other ways you are showcasing the beautiful traditions and customs of the respective Canadian regions? Um, across the country, especially to the outside world, not only to attract um, tourism, but also to create excitement about Ghana, given all the year of return and beyond the return um, um, energy that has been floating around in the country. Um, the, the board is also trying to collaborate with other uh, countries that are into folklore, and so that we can also promote folklore outside Ghana. We are also uh, um, uh, exploring the opportunity to register with um, uh, U US Society of Folklore. Uh, there's a fee, it's a body. And so we are looking at that opportunity also so that we can also register and join that body. And that will give us also another opportunity that we can collaborate with other countries that are doing something in folklore. We can also learn from them and they will also learn from us. We also further uh, sign a memorandum of understanding with NAFTI. Uh, it's a film uh, institution in Ghana that you, as you are in US, you can listen to our folk tale in the form of cartoons that can be shown on television screen that we can put it on our uh, smartphone. And so we are exploring all those opportunities to bring technology also into our folklore so that the younger, generation will appreciate it. And so these are the steps we are taking. Let's speak about the World Folklore Day, which um, Ghana hosted this time around. How relevant is the World Folklore Day celebration to the work of the National Folklore Board in Ghana? Um, uh, actually, the World Folklore Day, uh, many people ask in Ghana, they don't know about they, they don't understand what folklore means. A lot of people, even the elderly people, some do not even understand what folklore means. Sometimes they get the confusion between folklore and culture. And uh, there's a need for us to educate the public. And there's no other uh, national day or world day that except the World Folklore Day that we took that opportunity so that we can educate the public not only the youth, but those who do not have the information. Some even said they don't know that when you want to use folklore, you are supposed to pay royalties. And so we use this folklore day as a medium to educate the public, to appreciate what we have, and also display, showcase what we have to other countries and also to the younger generation. And so that is how very relevant uh, World Folklore Day is to us. So it is a time for us to create public awareness, create awareness. So it's very important to us because it gives opportunity to National Folklore Board to create awareness to the public and to the, the entire world. Now, um, what you mentioned uh, obviously points to the fact that a lot of um, funding is needed to help you champion your respective courses and to advance uh, your institution. What are some of the ways you are raising funds and where are you getting support from, both financially and logistically, to help you achieve your purpose as a board? Actually, I directly said that when it comes to football, when it comes to uh, Miss Ghana, when it comes to certain uh, some kind of activities in Ghana, they do not live only in a, solely in the hands of the government to support the promotion. And so I realized that it's also important that we give the same importance to uh, promotion of culture and folklore. So what we try to do is that we do not want to put all our hopes on uh, GOG, that's uh, government funding. And so we look up to, we, we knock the door of uh, financial institutions like banks, insurance, um, telecommunications, name them that we know that they can support. We actually send them a proposal and we had an appointment with them. 
we discuss with them that World Folklore Day is to create an awareness, is to preserve our culture. I have visited them all that I've ever spoken to them. They support in their uh, the small way. We did not uh, go to them very early, but even in, in a short notice, they responded to uh, support us. And so um, we're still hoping that more of the institutions uh, would uh, be part so that we can do it better. But some of them, because they don't understand, it has to take me a long time to explain to them what we are doing and then before they actually come on board. So those are the slight difficulties we have. And even those who are using the symbol, they find it difficult to pay for their royalties. They assume it's free. If something is for the country, I should use it free. But they are forgetting that as to use it free, nobody is preserving it and will soon, sooner or later will lose it. And so those are the little, little challenges we have. But we are speaking to them, we are persuade, persuading them, and we are encouraging them to support because it's a good cause and hoping that next year it will be better. Uh, share with us, we know you're a, a new and a young um, organization, but share with us some of your achievements so far that makes, make, make you feel like there's a lot of hope for the future of your um, organization. And uh, if you project into the future, some of the things that you would love to see become reality as well. So first of all, um, achievements and then followed by um, future projections. Um, actually now, 20, 2019, uh, we had our uh, legislative instrument. First, you cannot go to anybody to enforce uh, using of our folklore. But now we can enforce if you pursue you, we educate and you continue to not to comply with the rules and regulations. We've been given LI by the Parliament of Ghana to enforce. And so that is one of the achievements that folklore we have uh, gotten. We also got a grant from um, France government to have inventory, collection of all ICH, that's the intangible cultural heritage, which fall under folklore board. So that ground, we have launched it and we are working on it so that we can have national register. And so the, the agreement has already been signed. Work is, is in progress. We are putting together all the people who will be part of the, the project and so that we can have a national register. And also uh, folklore board has also established clubs in schools, as I already said, uh, to educate them. We have even, fortunately, some white people have enrolled their children to learn Ghanaian folklore. Surprisingly, in um, one of the schools in Legon, uh, some white people within the environment there were so impressed about how we go about folklore. So they enrolled their children. And now they are also learning folklore. So we are hoping that one day uh, these foreign students and Ghanaian students who, who collaborate and uh, come out with uh, uh, folk music to promote uh, Ghanaian culture or uh, Ghana folklore. And that will be a happy moment one day when I see that and I, I happen to see that. Our cultural heritage, also our intangible cultural heritage, is what makes us South Africans, regardless of creed or color. Perhaps the simplest way to get a feel for the concept is to say that many facets of intangible cultural heritage are those things that we, as South Africans, take for granted, and of which they are not always aware. In terms of the 2003 UNESCO Convention on Intangible Cultural Heritage, ICH comprises of the practices, representations, expressions, knowledge, skills, as well as instruments, objects, artifacts, and cultural spaces associated therewith that communities, groups, and in some cases, individuals recognize as part of their cultural heritage. In the South African context, this is what is commonly referred to as living heritage. In essence, both concepts mean one and the same thing. 
When people think of heritage, what comes to mind are monuments, such as the Women's Monument at the Union Buildings, and timeless monuments such as the pyramids, Zimbabwe ruins, the Great Wall of China, and so on. However, there is another important heritage that predates the gigantic monuments. We are talking about stories, performances, rituals, and events that were precursors to these monuments. Before human beings could build complex infrastructure, they had to know and understand their environment. To a large extent, the construction of physical heritage was an expression and manifestation of deep-seated beliefs and cosmology. South Africa has a rich and diverse intangible or living heritage. These find expression in how we celebrate, mourn and generally live our lives. When children are born, we celebrate and perform various rituals informed by our cultural background. The same happens when someone dies. And in between those two events, the fabric of our intangible cultural heritage determines the rhythm of our lives. And rhythm is one aspect of living cultural heritage that has become synonymous with Africa. We dance, even our leaders, even at formal occasions. Dance and music, though richly varied according to ethnic groups, is something that all the indigenous people share. Traditional dancing in Africa is still practiced as a basic life form. Song and dance are in fact forms of historical records. Most dancing has very specific actions which convey specific meanings that are passed from generation to generation. These traditions represent living records of past and present events and culture and equip each new generation with knowledge about important traditions, rituals and beliefs that are as old as humanity itself. Even modern dance styles developed in urban areas, influenced by pop and rap, still maintain many of the traditional ethnic dance styles. future plan is to have uh, our uh, ICH, that's uh, Intangible Culture Heritage, listed on World uh, uh, Heritage Register. And that's my passion. And we are hoping that we will have um, ICH, that's Intangible Culture Heritage Museum in Ghana, so that people can come and have a look at. Or when you travel, you see it on the World Heritage List. You travel outside and you come, you know which region has this uh, intangible culture heritage, and you can travel to the region and fail it. And this is our future uh, plan, and hoping that by the grace of God, uh, it shall come to pass. What would it take to have our ICH as Ghanaians listed on the um, World Heritage Database? The first step is that we have to have a national register. After the national register, and then, uh, so that means we'll list everything that we have in the whole country. And after that, we'll select, because we cannot put all um, one particular year, but we'll select that, those that qualify according to UNESCO standards. And then, so it takes a process. Sometimes it takes you two years, sometimes three years, depending whether you have the, the right information. No country is also claiming ownership to what you say that belongs to Ghana. If another country claim ownership, then you have to collaborate before you can put it on a World Heritage Register. So it's a gradual process, and immediately we manage to get national register, then we are on our way to, to, to the World Register. Uh, how can people on their individual you know, uh, basis support the work that you do, besides the funding that you need uh, and other um, things that you've talked about. How can individual, everyday people watching this support the work that you do? Um, I want to appeal to them that um, they can contact our office or write to us that this is what they want to support. Technical, financial, you send us an email that I want to support folklore and I'm coming with technical advice in collection of uh, our inventory uh, I want to support the, the data uh, processing system. Whatever knowledge you have, being financial, 
send us an email. We'll respond to that, and then we'll see how best we'll move from uh, that level. Awesome. Speak to the young Ghanaian or the young African or the young individual watching this uh, out there who is a little disillusioned about folklore or maybe even culture. What do you have to say to them to encourage them to believe in their identity, to believe in their culture, and to believe in the potential of who they are to become something as far as their culture and you know, folklore is concerned? Um, uh, I want to encourage all young Africans, African diaspora, being foreign, uh, that appreciate Ghana folklore and Ghana culture, that uh, the youth, you have to know who you are. If you take away who you are, you cannot discover yourself any, from anybody's uh, culture. And so I want to encourage them that our culture is very relevant. It does this, it creates wealth. It is when you appreciate something, that is why you can create wealth out of it. But when you do not appreciate it, it is difficult for you even to think about it, either to create wealth out of, out of it. There are a lot of artists, there are a lot of music, there are a lot of um, um, uh, film production, there are a lot of fashion designers. If you go to Nylon Clothing, uh, um, a lot of things that you can create out of our culture. And so I want to encourage them that they should not lose hope. They should love what we have. If you love yourself, you love what you have. If you don't love yourself, then you love somebody else, then you love somebody else what they have. So the first step is that love yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror. You say, I am a young African boy. I am a young African woman. I want to make something out of Africa. What we have, the material we have, the product we have, the services we have, I want to create something out of it. And when you start thinking that way, you see that you will come up and you'll be a star, in, not only in Ghana, not only in Africa, but the whole world, because you have used what we have to create, to solve problems. And so you become a star. And so they should not uh, be discouraged. They should not look at the poverty. They should not look at things that are happening around them, but they should look at creativity. They should think of who they are. They should love themselves and create of, out of all we have. And I think the young people will change African continent. They will change our country, Ghana, and Ghana and African continents will match even the developing country because we are using what we have. Thank you. Thank you so very much, viewers. You've been watching Hashtag The African Dream. We have for our very special guest, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Benis Andekuma, who is the National Folklore Board Director in Ghana. And like you rightly heard her say, love who you are, know who you are, and that's the tool you need to change the world around you. We appreciate you joining us and we look forward to having you here again very soon. All the best with your work. Thank you. I want to take the opportunity to thank you and thank you for the good work you are doing for Africa and diaspora and the whole world. And I want to thank our listeners for having me uh, all the best. We continue to work together for the betterment of our continent. Thank you. Thank you so much, madam. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Yeah, bye. All right, bye-bye.